uh, play of the game from way down. Plus two, silence. The Raider getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Raven. The Life Finder keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he was what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death Jeez. metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series. We're in week four. I'm your host tonight, Arrow. I have special guest co-caster Butte Holiday, who is throwing up peace signs. <laughs> I know, I was like trying to get four, four weeks, wow. I also have a other special guest who is gonna be just outside of camera for most of the night here. Uh, this is Ginger. Ginger. It's a doggy? No, Ginger is one of my cats. <gasps> So I brought her out of her, they have their own room in the house. I brought her out here uh, so that she could hang out with us and uh, be terrified by the dogs. So, okay. yeah, so there you go. So the game oh, is all ready God. to go here. So uh, we're gonna pop up a couple of things. We're gonna show the standings. We're gonna show the maps and then we're gonna hop right into the draft. You're only gonna get to see our beautiful faces for the briefest of moments here, but we'll be back after the game. Okay, well, my dragon's being a little naughty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I flipped over to the standings here. Just a quick look. We've got Disturbance has six points, Bloodbath and Beyond at four. They are right dead center, these two teams, right next to each other. Um, and a quick view of the maps. We're going to BOE on this first game here, and uh, that was selected by Disturbance. Bloodbath and Beyond banned out Braxis and Volskaya. And, no, they didn't. Disturbance banned out Braxis and Volskaya. Bloodbath and Beyond banned out Tomb of the Spider Queen and I'll track Pass. It's confusing. You guys really gotta red. stop banning Braxis. Okay? It's a really right? good map. It's the most balanced map. You guys really need to stop banning it. But you know what? We haven't seen a lot of BOE. We've seen a lot of Tomb of the Spider Queen and Infernal Shrines. So thank you to these two teams for not wanting to deal with that. I love it. I love variety. Arrow and Butte's variety hour. That's what this there is. There we go. So we are back onto the draft screen now. So we see right out of the gate, we've got a Stukov, Kael'thas, Asmodan, and Zul'jin ban. And uh, first pick's going to be our Tannis for that race. Not too surprising, but I have seen in at least Storm League that our Tannis is just kind of ignored potentially for his team fight um i'm not quite sure maybe there's better burn but um yeah i mean good first pick for the burn i guess and uh garrosh and rayner on the other side first two picks also uh some good race potential coming out of the rayner and uh garrosh yeah, you know if you get a, a bad swap as an artanis with a garrosh on the other side you end up uh finding your way swapped right into the graveyard I'm sure he's thinking, uh, you know what, that's not going to happen. He's probably confident in his ability as a swapper, but you know those people that just like walk right into the line and the person you didn't want to swap, and then you just, it's like a, you know, it's unfortunate. But I'm sure he's banking on that not happening, so. <laughs> These guys are on the wrong dang side. Ugh! Are you serious? Yeah, I got to swap them. Remind me to. I mean, I don't. Swap as them. as I, I swapped them on the thing, but as long as they are on the same side next round, I'm not gonna yell too much. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we have Vala and Jaina as our last two bands here. No, none of the none of the Frost Queen and the uh. Let's see, what should we call Vala? I feel like she's the championship vaulter. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> okay, that was dumb, sorry. <laughs> um, Recyclic, are you, are you on stream tonight? What, 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 who said that? I'm channeling my inner, uh, 
channeling, channeling my inner psychic. And we have Li Ming and Varian. It's a, it's a lot of burn coming on the left side, which is that Bloodbath and Beyond, or do you have to switch them? Uh, let's see. So the left side is Disturbance. Guys, come on. Yeah, yeah. I even told them. I told them to put uh, Bloodbath and Beyond on the left side, but they didn't listen to me. I have to go through. To all you teams out these. there, you have one job. Right? How hard is this? One. To, well, actually, two. To schedule matches and to be on the right side. All right. Brightwing being the last pick. We've got some interesting setup here. We've got the potential for Immortal Burn coming out of Sylvanas Artanis. Um, you know, Rhaegar has some moderate uh, damage as well. Uh, we might see a Twin Blade variant into the Artanis. Um, that's kind of an interesting setup. Um, mm -hmm. Not, you know, not completely unreasonable on a map like this, though. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of self-sustain coming out of the side of Bloodbath and Beyond with the... I mean, you have Blaze, Sylvanas... I mean, I think all of them except... I don't know if Artanis and Falstead have self... Falstead does have self-healing, I think, right? If you take the... Yeah, he does. So, I mean, all of them have pretty good self-sustain, which is good. Um, with Rhaegar being the healer as his only main... I mean big chunk of healing comes from if he takes ancestral or um i mean the chain healing is okay but um but that's good that they complement the self-sustain and they're relying on his damage output so all righty make sure you switch them they're switched oh, they are switched okay yeah it just again there's a fair uh delay there all right, well, I'll get started with the blue team. On the left, we have Disturbance. We've got Kurtz on the Garrosh, Captain Roberts on Li Ming, Belial on Brightwing, Mambo on Rainer, and Varian going to be played by Wraithling. And on the red team, we have for Bloodbath and Beyond. Love the name, by the way. Don't ever shop there. We have Rackham playing Artanis, the dude man. <laughs> playing Falstead, True Saint playing Rhaegar, Diet Llama on Sylvanas, and the Fiery Man Blaze played by Crafty Trent. I almost said Tent. Crafty Trent. I just gotta say, these uh, Div D teams, some of them have some really clever names. <laughs> Which one? Diet Llama? Diet, I like Diet Llama. <laughs> I do. I gotta admit it. But I uh, also like the Dude Man. That one really works. So, all right, so we've got Lion's Fang coming out from Varian, uh, the Hypershift for Brightwing. Oh, Garrosh so. looking for a quick, uh, oh, the nice Polymorph preventing the Sylvanas from escaping, but she walks away with less than 100 HP. Quick out of the gate with that uh, Groundbreaker stun, able to walk up and get that throw, so. I mean, Keep and an that's a great Garrosh. combo, especially with... Uh, with Bloodbath and Beyond having a lot of um, mobility and escape potential there, so the Polymorph's gonna be a really good- Uh-oh, dude, man. Heading up top lane to help out the Artanis. <laughs> Wraithling's <laughs> like, nah, I'm good. I may not be a character, but I'm good. Pops that uh, Varian spray. And with Falstead going top, this leaves Disturbance the opportunity to come down here and get right onto this camp. And Mambo did take the... Uh, Mm, exterminator at level one, so he does just massive damage to uh, minions and monsters. And the nice body block, I believe, by uh, let me think, Garrosh, Garrosh and yeah. maybe Ming to prevent the uh, bloodbath and beyond from trying to uh, re-engage on that camp. So it was some good body blocking, some good teamwork, and good awareness too, right? To 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 make that call, be aware that Falstad went up top, Varian kind of getting behind the wall, and uh, making sure that they took advantage of what they could. And now they get their uh, shaman camp. That what, is a very early camp. Yeah, it, what I was going to say is it might be early, but they're coming up here into the top lane because now this gives them the opportunity um, to get some value to clear this up, and mm -hmm. you know add some pressure somewhere. And oh, for sure. Blood I mean, Blaze is, is already now, but... three quarter. I mean, he's uh, doing pretty well clearing this camp here. Falstead flying 
uh, bot to help out. I guess, yeah, Artanis got it when Falstead came up. That's where that top lane went. Mm -hmm. um, I think I almost would have liked to have seen uh, Disturbance there, you know, in, once uh -oh. they take that camp, just go in and uh Oh, uh, the body blocks fight. are real, Artanis. Un unable to swap out of that one. Certainly. Uh, for when, another throw, oh no. Yeah, certainly when he gets uh, taunted by that uh, taunt Varian. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was a great place to throw him, too. I mean, you had Varian body blocking from the top, you had Garrosh body blocking from the right side um, of that little L-shaped bush there. Uh-oh. The Immortal helping out with some of that CC on the Sylvanas, but she's able to get away there. I think so, in a lot of the games that I've seen on this map, teams are a little less cognizant of the Immortal. Um, the Immortal is able to CC you, and it can get you killed, so... Uh, and that's, those stuns but... last a long time, too. The the mm -hmm. point-blank one, not so much, but the, the smaller circles are brutal. Everything uh -oh. just about out of mana here, so oh my gosh. quite a race between these two teams. Wow. Just barely going over to the blue side. I mean, I'm pretty sure, didn't, uh, who was ahead at halftime there? You know what, I wasn't uh, really paying attention at that point. I was looking at other <laughs> things at that time. Oh, I'm sure. Your kitty? No, kitty. I was looking at, like, Varian having no mana, because if he had mana there and didn't have to back, uh -oh, that was an Artanis kill. Oh, no, not even. <laughs> swap yeah. the throw. Not even necessary. You remember that stun uh -oh. we were just talking about? We got a DC there. Yeah. Are they going to pause? Uh, that is up to them, not up to us. We just get to watch the chaos. Welcome, everybody, from uh, Moist Weenus' stream. Weenus! Holla! We are watching Disturbance versus Bloodbath and Beyond, a D West matchup. And on the uh, side of Disturbance, getting that top well. Uh, a good push there. So, yeah, okay, so True Saint is back, so. Uh oh, Artanis! Artanis, buddy! Artanis goes down, unfortunately. Maybe assuming that his team was closer in the follow-up? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, um, perhaps. Rhaegar was uh, just coming out of the base when he walked up there, so there was definitely no healing potential there. <laughs> Mark Zombie, welcome to the stream tonight. Throwing out the <laughs> alpha, uh, alpha emojis, I think that's what, what those are. Oh my god, doggies. Thank you and for the And on the side bits, of disturbance, a lot of, uh, a lot of siege here, and a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of poke and a lot of siege, which, uh, that range is extremely helpful, especially maybe when you're trying to avoid fights under the immortal. Um, so it was so, a good push, uh, ready one fort down. So we do see the ping coming out that they're on their way, so Brightwing's gonna come down here. Falstead is actually on the way as well, so... Rackham is going to back out here, and Falstead's coming in from behind. I don't know that they have enough to really do anything I don't know until they... Rhaegar shows up. No, I don't think they kill. I mean, does Brightwing no okay. polymorph? Question mark? Right. Oh, man. If, if they had the polymorph up, they probably would have been able to live there, or maybe the uh, spell shield, the pixie dust, but I'm yeah. not quite sure. I didn't, I didn't have the cooldowns up, so I'm not quite sure there. Oh, but that's a that's a that's a pretty good pick. I mean, a healer being down for, you know, any portion of the fight. So. Yeah, and I mean, Brightwing has face shift, but it's not available yet because she just used it to go down. So we see uh, the race heavily in favor of Bloodbath and Beyond right out of the gate here. Rainer did get what he could up in the top there, uh, but Le by the way, that was without Sylvanas too. So mm -hmm. did she take? And Lee Ming is she did. Little late to the fight here. I'm trying to clear bot camp. He's yeah. going to continue to clear bot camp. She He's was not clearing the top camp the too. Not really, uh, not really the ideal camp clear, I think, of this team. I think Raider uh -oh. would have been better. Uh-oh, Artanis. There's the throw and then a taunt. Uh, Garrosh using Indomitable to oh make sure gosh. he punch that Bye, unstoppable. And they Varian's going to finish out. off uh, Artanis. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, Brightwing's stunned. Nope. And the Emerald Wind comes out from Brightwing to disengage. They do need to heal up a little bit. 
So See, one interestingly, for one. that's a little, uh, uh, that is phase shift down for Brightwing. I mean, I'm not a fan of that, uh, just using it when you're a couple feet away, unless it's maybe a really important circumstance where maybe you need everyone in the team fight and, or you need to pursue a team fight. Um, that's a, that's an important cooldown down, but I mean, it may be available if they're able to win this team fight, which it looks like they will. So that throw uh, from Garrosh and the body blocks keeping Rackham there, <laughs> the the throw onto Wraithling doesn't get him very far. <laughs> he just wanted to throw him up like a child, you know, like we yeah, throw him yeah. straight up in the air. There you go. We do have Emerald Wind up for Brightwing, so a good uh, disengage, and uh, Garrosh taking that stun there. And in the and the other part of that is. You know, if you do get CC'd and you're in a really tight race, that's time away from racing, especially sure. if you have range, so. This has got to be a dead oh, blaze. blaze. The great polymorph there to yeah. interrupt the jet propulsion. Combustion going Combustion. up, but it's hardly anything. And, you know, keep that mm. in mind, folks. There's no reason to use an ultimate just because. That's, you know, um, what, 80 second cooldown now that he won't have in the next fight. Will it yeah. make the difference uh, of that fight? Probably not, but it's And a good it's phase still... shift. A pause. Uh oh, Artanis, unstoppable by Rhaegar, I believe. Sylvanas, uh, silence coming out. Not really sure what that did in that situation, but Brightwing's really low on mana. Yeah, and they did use uh, the Emerald Wind there, but getting that uh, Artanis stunned because of the Immortal uh, ultimately leads to that kill as well. And very oh, getting Garrosh. thrown in. But I don't think he has Taunt. I think he used it on uh, Artanis. Yes. Now he does. There we go. So here we go, looking to push in this keep wall as the Immortal going down level 12 to level 11. And it's important to note, Falstad has not selected an ultimate yet. In fact, let's let's go ahead and talk about those. What do we got on this uh, Bloodbath and Beyond side? Uh, we've got the Suppression Pulse, Ancestral Healing, Wailing Arrow, no surprise, and Combustion. Uh, as a team fight is breaking out, combustion's coming out. Oh boy, that's a lot of damage. Ancestral going out on the blaze to keep him healthy. Rackham is uh, taking a lot of damage. Kurtz trying to get away, unable to do so. And Rackham only has a couple hundred health, so he's going to back away now as his shield is proc'd. Wraithling has absolutely no mana, neither does Brightwing. As only I am one kill out now. of that. Is there a, I mean, is there a strategy for holding this that long? I mean, what what are they? What would he be waiting for? Uh, I mean, he's not in the team fight, so that's the oh, mighty th that's the only there thing. Yeah, I was gonna say like the only thing I can think of is is that he was waiting to see if there was a team fight where they could get you know like a really solid jet propulsion that he could insta lock a hinterlands blast. Um, mm -hmm. But even still, I mean, Gust is Gust is one of those utility tools that. Um, you know, unless you absolutely need the damage. For sure. It's just so good. Yeah, I mean, and against, you know, and against their comp. I mean, you've got, I mean, you can instantly save one person, you know, with a good gust. If you just kind of barrel roll in and gust them, you might be able to save them, especially if there's someone like your healer or, I mean, hell, even, you know, somebody with low mobility, but... So once again, there's the throw taunt onto Artanis, and there's that disengage. Uh, but Jet Propulsion goes in, stops the Emerald Wind. Combustion uh -oh, goes out, Rhaegar. hits three. Or Rhaegar. Rainer in trouble. Rainer, yep. Yeah, I was like looking, at, <laughs> I was looking at Rhaegar, <laughs> thinking Rainer. Artanis Kurt's, really low here. Kurt's got They're some all really man, low uh, on the side of disturbance. Yeah, two man stun, which gives him a shield to keep him alive. Wraithling does taunt the uh, Falstad. Low health bars on the red team, but also Wraithling now, unfortunately, going to go down to that lightning. I don't know if they trade this. I'm really not sure if they trade this. That's a lot of mobility. Yeah, two, two <laughs> to zero at this point, and they're going to get... Bloodbath and Beyond is right up on the Immortal now, uh, but Garrosh able to get the flip in and Li Ming able to secure that kill onto Artanis. I, th I really don't think Artanis is the one you want kind of posturing on that enemy side of the objective. Or even if you want anybody on that side at all. I, I mean, that's a great use. Oh that's an excellent use of the immortal stun on the side of destroy. I mean, that was just... I don't know if that was on purpose, but that was really smart. You know, 
I would say that it probably was. They have made uh, really fantastic use of the Immortal Stuns using their taunts to make sure to lock people down in those stuns consistently throughout this game. So I'm going to go with it was probably on purpose. They've See, done I've lot. had a lot of people tell me, wow, that was a good play. And I'm like, I'm not going to lie, dude. I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say that, so... And you know, I can certainly there, to that. there are certainly plays where it just happens and it's great. Oh, uh -oh look at this. Said, looking for a gust, maybe? Question mark? Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> the Lee Ming just blinks. Oh, I don't Captain know if it'll Roberts matter, is though. Toast. Absolutely toast. obliterated. Crafty Trent there in the middle of everything. The big taunt onto Blaze. Also onto Artanis, who had the unstoppable, though, as <laughs> Brightwing going to get taken out by Falstad. I don't think she had enough mana for, a, uh, for an Emerald Wind or a Polymorph. Uh, unfortunately, which I don't know if that even then would have saved her. An Emerald Wind probably would have, but that's unfortunate. But you know what? Can't win them all, right? In well, no, I suppose you. you I mean, you could, can, but like in theory. You know. Okay, for the sake of this cast arrow, you can't win them all. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Or at least they <laughs> didn't win them all. How about that? Here you go. Could have, but didn't. Now we get on the Immortal Defense, the throw onto Artanis. But it's going to be very Ooh. knocked back away from the Immortal. Unfortunate that on the side of Bloodbath and Beyond, they don't have a lot of poke, really, aside from Falstead. And maybe Blaze, you know, flames that can really poke down a fort. I mean, they still get it, but compared to Disturbance, you know, they don't really have that potential. And Artanis getting... Managing to swap himself out, which is great, and Li Meng opting for that uh, disintegrate. I'm assuming for both the burn uh, and the siege potential here. Yeah, so we did see once again Emerald Wind interrupted. These guys have done a really good job of interrupting Emerald Wind. I, I don't think it's always been on purpose, but uh, Sylvanas is in a lot of danger here as she gets thrown away. Falstad trying to come in and help, but uh, ultimately, with that many health bars on the blue side, can't really do a whole lot about it. And so both teams will pick up the siege camps to get some pressure going in that lane. Uh, not I would say relatively even on structures. I mean, pretty even in XP, which is uh, pretty good. You know, Bloodbath and Beyond down on uh, have uh, both forts down. Um, Disturbance still has one alive. Um, and I think, honestly, having that well still available um, with the Immortals up, I mean, that is that has the potential. I mean, yeah, you have the middle wells that you can, you know, go back to in theory, but, um, you know, having a well available, I think, is good. But they might just take it down right now, and Falstead just says, nah, dude, you don't get your well anymore. But here they come after picking up that siege camp. They don't want to lose this fort if they can help it. The disengage, Falstad, Gust, Taunt going out onto Artanis, but the cleanse coming out as well. Emerald Wind. I'm not sure I like these Emerald Winds this game. Um, and the cleanse onto Garrosh, which is, again, immediately negated. There's a lot of cleanses happening. Oh my goodness. Is this team fight going to end? Holy crap. Nobody dies. Yet. It looks like Bloodbath and Beyond a little bit uh, healthier. Uh, Falstead flying down to uh, address that camp pressure. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what I, I don't think I like what I'm seeing coming out from uh, Disturbance here. You know, they see Falstead in the bot lane. I think that they I mean, should have again... gone straight onto the Immortal and raced. But then again, they're getting the kill onto the Artanis, but they're losing half time out of it. Yeah, no, I again, I do not think that he should be the one on that side of the objective. Um, I think that there are other people with better escape potential, um, or just don't even be on the enemy side of the objective, especially when you maybe don't know where they are or what angle they're coming from. Yeah. Um, they're gonna opt for that trading that camp, Falstead, I think bribing two of them, I believe. Looks that way. Yep. So That's some good timing on that camp though. Half time achieved. It does have a, a pretty decent minion wave with a catapult to go through, so it looks like both teams just gonna go ahead and race at this point because they're pretty Disturbance. close. Disturbance! Oh, the the gust. I don't really think that's gonna help them in this case, but uh, was a good effort, potentially trying to slow them down. I think maybe he thought the race was much closer than it was. Yeah, and and that's tough when you've got you know leaming with uh, uh, mirror ball. You've got. Uh, Rainer Execute, or I'm sorry, Exterminator, like it's a lot of damage going in there. 
Mm-hmm. And we've so. got a Disturbance Immortal on its way. Interestingly enough, we see at 13 Varian going into the Warbringer uh, trait called Juggernaut, as opposed to going into Shattering Throw for Artanis, or even Mortal Strike to uh -oh. negate some of that healing. Ooh, I thought Wraithling was going in on that, I'm not gonna lie. So, full wall down. Uh, it's still a pretty healthy Immortal. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they're not focusing the keep as much. You know, kills are kills are really nice. But oh my god, the immortal just said, nah, boys, you ain't getting in. I'm protecting my blue people. And they're and gonna end up getting a keep. That's a that's a big keep. That's a lot of pressure. Uh in the top lane there. Not only did they get the keep, but they also got the kill onto Artanis. Again, being up in the the front, it's you know it's it's a tough place to be in with the Artanis Blaze setup going into the Garrosh because, you know, you don't really have... Neither of your tanks are really in a good position to be able to get out, right? Artanis could, in theory, swap himself out, but he's not going to get very far with a, say, Varian Taunt. And where's Blaze going to go? He's not going to Jet Propulsion. He's going to hit somebody and stop. So even if he no. uses um, his level 1, which he didn't take, so he doesn't have the uh, Unstoppable... Um, he's still not gonna be able to get out. So do you think bunker would have? Um, I mean they've gotten some value out of combustion. Do I think bunker would have been the better pick here? Probably not Probably not because I would have just given him a nice easy target for a emerald wind or you know a Garrosh taunt. And we do see they don't have taunt. a lot of CC. Yeah, really. They don't have a lot of CC to go off of. I mean they've got a slow from Falstead, a swap from Artanis that hasn't really put anybody really given anybody a reason to be scared of it. Um, a Sylvanas silence, and that I mean, you have the Rake are slow, but um, you know they don't really have a lot of CC to go off of. Whereas you know Disturbance has a lot of potential. Um, Just putting up at least more the potential. stats no. there for. Uh, Duke asking in chat the, the death total for Artanis. Eight. Yeah. Sir. Or ma'am. Well, yeah. And Brightwing getting the kill on Sylvanas. That is a that is a big kill. And, and level, the uh, yeah. Ancestral coming out already. Level 20 is available now, so we did get the uh, uh, execute from Rainer. We've got the upgraded Warlord's Challenge, the uh, slowing disintegrate, the upgrade to Emerald Wind. <laughs> Uh, and the, is it Banner of the Alliance? Glory to the Alliance. So extra healing and obviously being able to use it more often. Um, so that's, you know, that's an interesting pick on the Brightwing with the Emerald Wind. It's available more often, but also it drains your mana. But we're seeing that sure. taunt again on oh, Rackham. Oh, washing out. Uh-oh. But a good disengage there by the Brightwing and then the uh, secondary cleanse uh, for the slow. Yeah, I think um, I think the Brightwing's been a little bit liberal, and I don't mean politically. I mean using it more often um, with the Emerald Winds. But you know what? At the end of the day, uh, you know that could have been a team wipe, and you never know. Um, Artanis maybe nine hitting nine. He did get the swap onto Art uh, onto Varian, but ultimately oh, Varian went right oh, where he wanted. Oh man! Oh, Falstead just saying, <laughs> Control Alt Delete, man. Yeah, no doubt. With wow. the uh, wind tunnel getting a full domination. Woo! Way to go, Artanis. Your sacrifice was not in vain. And that was a clutch play that put them in a very uh, aggressive spot, and they were right up, literally against a wall. Uh, there are, however, three catapults on the core, so we're going to see Falstead coming back and claiming He decided himself. to fly just south of the uh, bottom lane. I, I really don't see why he did that. Maybe to maintain the lane pressure, but I mean, the three catas, you could have allowed yourself to get a little bit more top pressure. But you know what? I don't so... play Falstead, so... They're getting uh, the Shaman Camp and the Siege Camp to go alongside this Immortal. And I don't know that that's a worth call. 
because yes, you will have more pressure. That is true. But you will also have all five members of Disturbance up and they have been pretty good about defense and getting kills on when they're defending. I don't know that that was, you know, yeah, you don't get as much value if, it, if it's just the Immortal, but you have Sylvana, so who cares? Exactly. I mean, and core. on the side of disturbance, they have the uh, they have a lot of poke and a lot of distance, so that allows them to kind of be a little bit more conservative and safe in terms of burning down the immortal. But I mean, Sylvanas coming in with the uh, I don't does that uh does that assist the immortal? I have no idea. Oh no, it doesn't. He's like no. He, I was like he's all he's all in flames. So I was like, is that normal? <laughs> No, that was uh, that was something else, I guess. Gust coming out, Sylvanas using the trait. Jet propulsion in, but Emerald Wind pushing them away as he didn't get uh, stunned. Keep in mind, Brightwing silences now with her level 16 as well. So every time she hits a hero with the center of her arcane something or other, um, what is that ability called? Her Q. Uh, it is. Wow, why did it swap off of it? It's uh, Arcane Flare. There we go. So every time she hits somebody with the center that they're uh, silenced for a second and a half. I am a little surprised though that they oh, did wait. not opt for the um, Polymorph upgrade. Yeah, the armor penalty? Yep, yeah, for sure. I mean, they've been doing a really great job comboing with that. So um, that swap that though puts them in a really bad position. Whoa! And we're seeing deaths left and right here as uh, that swap ultimately this time put them in the position to be able to get these kills onto Raynor and then uh, Garrosh and then Brightwing. And now mm -hmm. with three kills, I don't see any. I don't see why they're waiting to go back and kill minions. This should be a core call and. Yeah, I don't know why Sylvanas is uh, pushing, but, uh, or, uh, you know, a queen is never late. Everyone else is simply early, okay? And Sylvanas is the Banshee Queen. And if you can name that movie, you get bonus smiles, any of you. And that is an excellent comeback from Bloodbath and Beyond. Late game, late game team. Wow, that was a... It was like, the first half was like disturbance domination, and then, holy crap, the second half was like bloodbath and beyond, like, coupons to bloodbath and beyond, everybody. <laughs> That's what they're offering you today. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm channeling my inner wreck today. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> so we do see damage-wise, we've got Li Ming, uh, followed by Blaze and then Falstad, so Blaze putting out a lot of damage, presumably with that uh, combustion. Um, numbers wise, Brightwing, Rhaegar, you know, pretty similar in, uh, in overall healing and only 200 damage difference between Artanis and Blaze in the damage soaked. Of course, the death numbers, a little bit different story. Yeah. But you know what? At the end of the day, I think late game, I think early game, Bloodbath and Beyond didn't really, um look for trades when Artanis got, I don't want to say caught out, but when he got killed. And I think late game they said, you know what, like if he's going to go in hard, or if he's going to get thrown in, like there's got to be somebody we can kill. And then Falstead just came in and grouped them all up and gusted them out, and then you know, Sylvanas went to town, so um, yeah. never give up, never give up. As we saw, I think my first cast, I don't remember who it was, but you know, 6% on the core, you can come back and you can win a game. So if you're a mid to late game team, you know, just stick with it. Apparently Duke saying Princess Diaries too. Well, yes, yes, excellent. Wow, Duke, bonus smiles to you. Uh, Question, is that bonus smiles or bonus miles? Bonus smiles. Oh, okay. Or a funny face of your choice. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, fair enough. All right, well, let's check in with uh, Wraithling and see where they are going. Did you get the uh, picks and bands game on? I did. No, okay. I didn't. Oh. Is it in your, is it in chat? Yep. I just want chat? to make sure it went through. Where'd you put it? I don't see it. Oh, shit. I put it in region. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
would you mind carrying that over to our conversation so I that I can actually... Ah, there I we go. Did. Thank you. There Appreciate it. <laughs> so go figure the entire game. I know. Uh, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Ginger's, like, oh, yeah. Ginger's been sitting here like right up in the face of the camera the whole time until we get to the end of the game. And she's like, I'm going to lay down now. I'm tired. <laughs> oh. Which means that she's out of camera. No, All except Ginger. the very top of her head. Ginger, no. <laughs> so let's see where we're going here. Please don't say Tomb of... Wait, they ban Infernal? <laughs> they ban please don't tomb. say Tomb of the Spider Queen. They banned please. Tomb. They did not ban Infernal. Okay, please don't say Infernal. Please don't say Infernal. Polskaya. Oh, <gasps> okay, so Disturbance is going with first pick. Okay. So let's see... What... Rackham says. I'm gonna put my camera over here. I feel weird looking over there. I'm like wondering why I'm looking to. <laughs> I'm looking weirdly to the side. I'm like, oh, the camera's over there. Oh, okay. Oh, that's really close to my face. Okay, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Except maybe my mom, and my mom's not here. All right, we are gonna go to Cursed Hollow. Yay! Oh my gosh. I would love I'm you know what? I'm really excited for this. Especially with the amount of team fighting that they did last game. Um switch sides. <laughs> the host has to oh. rip. One job. <laughs> I asked him where we're going. Right right now, he just told me Cursed Hollow. Thanks. We're in the draft. We can see it. <laughs> oh my god. Get away from me. I don't want this camera that close to my to, face. I need to update the... Uh, <clears throat> let's see. So that was the red team that selected... Wait, wait. No, it wasn't. It was because I swapped, right? Red team. It was Disturbances Yes, you swapped pick. it. So they were wrong. So whatever it is, I'm assuming it's swapped. So now the red team won. Okay, I think that's right. Because when I swap teams, it doesn't swap the who picked because it's just blue or red, right? So it, I have to actually tell it. So but we should be good there now. Can you switch me back to the other side? Oh, what I was is like, I want to go to the other team. Let's see. What do we got going on here? Belial is there. Got the wrong Kurtz Mambo. How are you doing Very tonight, funny. chat? Are you guys pumped? Because you know what? I'm pumped. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> but I hope you're having a good night, chat. The true... Y'all are on... Y'all are at about an 11. Y'all need to take it down to about a 7. <laughs> Listen, uh, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. I don't know what Gordon <laughs> Ramsay would say to you, but probably something like that. This is a party stream. You know, Arrow ready to go golfing and me with the weird middle school pigtails, like, we're ready to- I like to how your headset makes it look like you're in a black light. Is it really? I mean, kind of, just because there's like white on the edges of it. Oh, oh that's kind of weird. What is that? Yeah, just so you know, we can't hear you when you don't have your mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so let me get this straight. So left, we've got Disturbance. Yes. yes and then we've got Bloodbath and Beyond. Okay, good. Correct. All right, just want to make sure. All right, so Falstad's going to be the first ban of wow. this game on Cursed Hollow. I'm assuming that's a respect ban. I mean, it's Cursed Hollow. Globals are, <laughs> globals are value. But yeah, I mean, Falstad sure. pretty much just single-handedly won them the game with that. Mm -hmm. uh, that epic wind tunnel at the end of that. For sure. MVP so. going over to Falstead, in my opinion, last game. Uh. And it was... Let's see. Asmodan. Yes, red team. Yeah, yeah. Asmodan. I don't... Uh, I don't like Asmodan here. It's such a <sighs> big map. It's hard to get stacks. Like mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think it's... I don't know what the time is, but... I'm assuming I never I've literally never touched Asmodan like he's level one with no games so I don't know what the oh cooldown is on his like 
thing that he needs stacked, the disc. I don't know if it's Q or... Yeah, it's Q, and it's like 12 seconds. I mean, it's, that's... 10 to 12 seconds, it's one long. interrupt. So they have, I mean, a little bit of time, but at the end of the day, you know, that's a single interrupt. I don't know, he has the potential, but just like you said, on this big of a map, getting stacks. Yeah, my room is really dark, I'm sorry. I don't... <laughs> Eight. That's that's all she has to say about that. Yeah, the <laughs> other thing is is that like kind of the opposite of Kael'thas, um, or I guess kind of the same reason that I don't see Kael'thas as valuable here is is that the um, the generally speaking the uh, tributes are in pretty open areas. There's mm -hmm. a lot of space where you can. Yes, there are walls nearby for the Diablo to bang into, but you know you're you're generally able to kind of spread apart. Um, pretty decently around the tributes, so you can kind of avoid spreading living bomb as long as you're not, you know, running through the, you know, some of the choke points. Um, I agree. And that's the thing about the Asmodean too is, is that because people can spread out, they don't need to worry as much about the Asmodean. I mean, so. maybe, maybe it's the whole concept of interruption again. I mean, you know, the Q's got decent range. Um, his E has decent range um you know i mean maybe maybe that's what they're thinking um you know if you but at the end of the day i mean yeah bomb is something to fear but you know just like you said i mean these are pretty open areas um i think the the stukov is good i mean dahaka there you go i mean i think on the side of disturbance i'm i'm really liking their draft so far i agree um, you know, they can use those walls that we talked about. And, you know, as much as the tributes are in fairly open areas, the it's fairly narrow corridors to get to them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I mean, that's the one thing about a Kael'thas is that if you can get a fight in a place like that, then, okay, yeah, you're going to demolish the team. But we're going to see a Jaina. Uh, is this uh, attempt at a choke thing. here? Or, like, are they trying Maybe. to... Maybe. It could be. They could be targeting one specific player. Probably Belial. No. Belial, he wait, did they swap yeah. they swapped up their healer. Belial they was on sure did. Yeah, Belial was Brightman. Hmm. Well hey, you know what? Flexible team, props to you, man. If you can swap it up, go for it. Red's coming in for the free Rhaegar. drinks. Interesting. I mean those are all picks that were used last game. I mean, maybe Indeed. they're just testing uh, B, B, and B, Bloodbath and Beyond to see, you know what? Okay, what else do you guys got? Yeah, but, you know, just like the uh, the military, you know, they're always training for the last war and not preparing as well for the next one. And that's kind of the problem here is that, you know, yeah, the, some of these heroes certainly, you know, are worth banning out. Um, but we see them just taking away the heroes from the, uh, from the Disturbance team, so... For sure. Um, I am a little surprised that they haven't already locked a DPS. I mean, I I, I know Dahaka is kind of a hot commodity on this map. Um, you know, Stukov isn't really... He's, he's good. I mean, he's a good all-around pick. I wouldn't say he's, like, you know, the hottest of commodities, but I'm a little surprised they didn't grab a DPS early. Um, and we have a Cassia and a Gul'dan. Gul'dan, I think, uh, assuming he goes Horrify? Assuming... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, they have some pretty good, uh, pretty good damage on the side of Disturbance here. But, I mean, we see the Li Ming on Bloodbath and Beyond, known as an excellent interrupter. Large range, uh, decently low cooldowns. We're seeing an Uther. The, uh, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of an appropriate word, because I only, I'm not going to use my swear. Um. I mean, you already did, but that's okay. Did I really? Oh, no, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, hundred percent. I turd. <gasps> I turd. Um, what is another <laughs> word? Okay, you know what? Uther is a lady of the night with mana. Ugh. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> wow. I well, you know what? It's, it's true. It's red light district casting tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is ten forty-five Eastern. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so there you go. I don't. So whose draft are you liking better? Well, whose draft are you liking better as a draft? And then in the context of the map, which I guess is what really matters because they're playing on Cursed Hollow, so. 
Oh, man, I don't know. I think I like Disturbance's draft better. The, the, the same thing as last round, though. I think that they got the better draft, and but they need to make sure that they don't, you know, th basically throw the game at the end. Uh, and I think that they can take this. This is a, a you know, high value uh, damage comp, um, but we'll see. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm, I mean, personally, I'm loving the peel on the side of Disturbance. I mean, having, you know, the Dahaka. Not that Varian isn't equivalent in terms of peel if he goes taunt. Um, but I do think, you know, the drag, the tongue, the drag, um, I think that provides a little bit more. So, I don't know. But I'm excited to see. I think this will be a really good game. It's a big map, so objectives are important. Um, yeah, so let's. We should uh, probably introduce the teams. Yeah, let's do that. So for disturbance, we've got Belial is going to be on Cassie this time. Kurtz is on Diablo. Raithling on Gul'dan. Mambo on Stukov, and Captain Roberts on Dahaka. And on Bloodbath and Beyond, as they're already starting to spill the blood, we have Rackham playing Joanna, Crafty Trent playing Zul Jin, the Dude Man playing the Orb Lady Li Ming, Diet Laman Varian, and the True Saint playing Uther. So I do want to point out uh, <coughs> level one for Zul'jin going into Bone Slicer. Uh, a little bit different talent than you see on Zul'jin most of the time. You often see that Headhunter getting the additional damage and ultimately the range. Um, so I I'm interested to see how that plays out. I don't know that I've ever seen that talent. Um, we also I see the High King's Quest I have never touched Zul'jin, so I'm assuming... Uh... <laughs> I'm assuming it's a, you know, I'm going with you, Arrow. I'm assuming it's an odd pick. But go, whatever, you do you. Whatever floats your boat, man. Yeah, I mean, I don't generally mind uh, build diversity. Um, you know, if it's something you're comfortable with and you can make it work, then, you know, by all means, make that work. Mm -hmm. I think so. uh, we have Mambo taking the low blow. I love that on Stukov, uh, especially, you know, when you have the Diablo Slam or potentially Dahaka drag Diablo Slam. Um, they have a lot of damage coming out of that side. So the low blow may be able to finish some people off. So pretty early camp on Zul'jin here uh, on the siege camp. You know, I would have liked to have seen that a little bit later as the tribute is up in the top lane. That being said, we saw in a game last night who uh, I don't remember which team it was, um, but in the it was reversed. It was the top lane uh, siege camp that they left for a good long time and the enemy team just walked in and, and took it because they were like, hey, we know this was taken. And uh, oh, look, that tribute's coming up. Let's go steal it from you. Yeah, I mean, at some point, you know, if they've gone missing for so long, I mean, if you're going to sit there and sit in a bush for, you know, five minutes or a minute and a half, yeah, more power to you. But, you know, you're you might lose soak. And uh, but usually they maybe are taking a camp and didn't cap it. So, hey, you know what? Props to that team if they're able to keep track of that. So uh, we do see a Twin Blades variant here. So we'll see how uh, they make use of that. He's already pretty low on mana, um, but he's Twin Blades, so, you know, a lot of his damage comes out of just being on the target, but the Hakka... Actar pointing back. out uh, Uther as an odd pick uh, for the side of uh, Bloodbath and Beyond. You know, I, I think I would have... I don't know. I think I would have liked to see maybe... I, I love Anduin. Uh, I think he has really great potential. Um... And maybe it with this team, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, who would I mean, who would you have liked to see, Ector? I'm I'm curious on your perspective. Um, well, I think right out of the gate, you have to think about you know heroes like Malfurion or uh, mm -hmm. Lucio or for sure. Well, Lucio would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Oh, they're already Joanna, able to d out. Uh, yeah. Zuljin in a little bit of trouble. He walks away fine, but Joanna. Sacrificial lamb here. That low blow taking the uh, taking the kill. You know, I don't know if if he thought you know, oh, Zuljin might die here. I, d I don't know if that sacrifice was worth it here. Well, and and Varian and Zuljin, I think uh, both had to go tap, um, and they're still fighting this. And you know, to Ektar's point, you've got Uther into a. Oh just... wow, that's a great peel out of Diablo, but he goes down anyway. It is a three v four. But Stukov is uh, barely a person at this point with uh, maybe 300 health. 
I'm not quite sure. Yeah, and Johanna's back, and not only that, but they're getting massive value in the mid lane too. And For now, sure. I can't. Oh my god. I mean, at this point, give give it up. Go take care of that camp. I mean, you don't, you know, I, I really doubt you win this team fight. Uh, wow, I really Cassia doubt you win this team fight. Oh, versus man. Versus Li Ming comes down to the one last auto attack, and it's going to be Li Ming taking it. So that mid camp got them uh, the wall and half of the fort. Uh, yeah, as well I mean, as that's a few huge. Kills. That's huge. I mean, that that middle well, especially, you know, when you need to traverse through the middle, maybe you're grabbing a camp before the objective spawns. But you know what? That seems to be a hub, uh, especially with teams, uh, you know, going across the map, this huge map. So, I mean, that's a great any I mean, anything really, any structure damage really um, is good for them. I mean, they are down in they are down in XP barely, but. Yeah, and that's by the that's equalizing out now um, because of the the minions coming mm -hmm. in. Yep. So let's take a look here. We have subdue calamity, second win. It looks like we've got the uh, hand protection out of either um, mm -hmm. the additional. I don't remember the name. Surge of light from Cassia for that additional burst. Some uh, flame stomp talents there for Diablo. Um, is that yeah, okay? Reduce cooldown. Varian diving in. Zuljin walking out of the channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think. I think Varian was just trying to distract. Maybe they would have stayed there for a while longer. I doubt they would have just let him. Uh... Well, Varian going oh, in onto Stukov gets charged away by Diablo. Both of them taking some damage here, but. Cassia uh... going down. Li Ming with the calamity to finish her off. And, and Wraithling's he... having a little bit of trouble in the back line against this Li Ming, but. Varian doesn't have a whole lot of health. He does get extra healing from Second Wind when he's below uh, 50%, but he's not invulnerable until they get a D shield, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Tongue going out onto Johanna, but uh, Varian charging in, and keep in mind that silence doesn't prevent him from attacking, but uh, Gul'dan going down to that Li Ming that you were mentioning Li Ming earlier. being, a, being extre I mean, with the Calamity, extremely aggressive, but you know what? It's working out, and no one's really... Uh, no one's punishing her. No one's... Uh, wall banging her no one's dragging her i mean at the end of the day you can't you know if you don't punish somebody being aggressive they're gonna continue to be aggressive and it's gonna work out for them so props that Li ming good play on the side of uh bloodbath and beyond here so i just want to clarify we've got a lady of the night in uther and we're requesting <laughs> that somebody wall bang uh okay that Li ming. that is that literally not a oh my god okay see you said it not me is that literally not a uh that's a, not the name ability? the, the ability is called shadow charge okay well it doesn't matter what it's called but is it not a wall bang you bang somebody against it the is, one you stun them it, i mean it is a what little, else? kind of a wall bang that's why i've said it <laughs> arrow started it i just want to point this out he started it captain <laughs> roberts running away from a 3v1 there as now the blue team they did get uh some siege value up in the top lane during that last uh, tribute and this one now for curse as disturbance does get their mid camp out looking to get that pressure but uh, there's enough time for bloodbath and beyond to clear that and they don't even have to fight this they can just clear this make sure they don't lose any structures um even I mean, give would it you up, go maybe. for the mid four at this point i mean it's clear the really camp and go close the uh, yeah, i don't and... think they have the yeah they don't yeah. have the clear for that Unfortunately. Uh, so, Stukov opting for a massive shove. But we got Varian down here on the boss. This is actually what I thought you were going to ask was, do you go for that boss? And Varian's already got it to about uh, two-thirds health. Um, and amazingly, it hasn't yet been sniffed out, although... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Li Ming trying to, I think, serve as a distractor here. That is yeah. two ults down? One ult down? They're doing a great. Oh no! What? what? They gotta know now. How? Uh -oh. What? They gotta leave. Oh no! Oh very, man. Very unfortunate. Okay, let let's chat about some alts here. It seems like the chat has a. Uh... So Joanna, falling sword. Uh. Okay, I don't like it. Uh. Wave I don't know of force what. I don't know what main. value falling sword brings them. I mean, it's a get-out-of-jail-free card, but even that isn't going to work with a Stukov Silence. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a little surprised, especially, you know, the Diablo, you know, say you throw somebody and maybe it's, you know, Uther, you know, you might be able to save him or at least potentially huh. re-engage. I don't understand the value of that horrify, but, you know, okay. Oh, I didn't even see that. I didn't either. I heard I'm it. I'm assuming he's thinking nobody, uh, nobody say anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> nobody saw anything. in there. But there's yeah, the falling really. sword going out onto Gul'dan. With literally no DPS following. Yeah. I mean, here they come now, but a Cassia ball lightning getting spread around. Uh... Yeah, and uh, so Iron Skin popped from Johanna. Diet Llama going back into the back line gets wow, the D shield. Wow, Zul'jin with the guillotine coming in hot. Uh oh, oh my god, that low blow on the Dahaka. <laughs> and we see a and we see a ping to kill the Cassia there. I I, I don't know if you win this. Uh, I mean, I, I think that if walk they walk away. I think that this is still, yeah, I was going to say, I think that Bloodbath and Beyond can still actually do something there because, um, I mean, Variant does a lot of damage and has quite a bit of self-sustain, even without having an Uther there. Um, yeah, but he's I level mean, 13 I, now, I, taking that Juggernaut talent once again. I think the mana, though, I mean, the mana issue with Uther, especially mid to late game in these long-term team fights, I mean, yeah, he probably could have kept him alive for a while. Um, but you know what happens when you hit no mana, you know, right. you're gonna have to walk away and all of that time that you could have spent soaking um, Or you know doing something um, We have bloodbath and beyond opting for the boss call 2.0 um, baby boss 2.0 trying to get this uh, Very this and learning from one. his mistake last time. Maybe not letting the boss stun him. I'm not quite sure I wasn't really yeah. watching but burning the boss down pretty quickly yeah, Crafty Trent helping out, and uh, we do see Disturbance doing the same thing. Do want to shout out Slexia coming in with the 69 bits, and uh, Colin chat a little spicy tonight. Uh, Arrow, you want to put up some stats uh, for the good folks in the chat? What kind of stats would we like to see, everybody? Death, siege damage, hero damage? Sure, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. I think Bloodbath and Beyond has a good position here. Uh, Apoc coming out, the Joanna's able to avoid it. Varian's able to, I think, isolate on the Varian. <laughs> he looks really funny swinging his sword with that thing on his face. Diablo trying to get out does not look like he will, and that is a, almost a full team wipe. Oh my god, look at this lane pressure. I mean, you've got mid fort basically down. Down. And then you've got a boss hitting, cur hitting a fort on curse. I mean, that's a lot of lane pressure with the DPS just spawning and Varian going bot to deal with the boss. Yeah, and you know, we didn't quite get to call it out, but the kill onto Gul'dan, oh, uh, hello, uh, Dahaka being in a little bit of a forward position there, but um, the kill onto Gul'dan just destroyed the uh, Zul'jin uh, guillotine landing and taking him right out of the fight, and then of course followed up quickly by Stukov and uh, Cassia. For and sure. uh, there's that guillotine again right on to Lord of Terror. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I definitely think uh, Blessed Shield would have been the pick here. But, you know, maybe they're just trying to distract and pull them off so they might be able to isolate one or two people. Um, people tend to get really distracted by that kind of stuff. And, you know, worst case, they ignore it. Uh, and the Joanna is... Oh my gosh, Bloodbath and Beyond just saying... We hit the core. We're hitting the dang core. That is gonna be game. Wow. Holy smokes. Not what I expected to happen uh, with these drafts wow. or the circumstances. Certainly not when you see, uh, you know, Varian dying to the solo boss there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it definitely looked like, you know, Bloodbath and Beyond wasn't quite all together and then they just showed up kind of like yeah. in game one they they were kind of disjointed and then they were like hey all right we, we're done playing with our food let's go win the video game and uh and that puts them ahead now in the standings too by the way as they get the full domination points and go ahead of uh disturbance by one point now yeah hey i mean they came in, I wouldn't say super sloppy. It just looked like maybe they weren't prioritizing 
what they needed to prioritize, or maybe they were prioritizing other things, you know, in the early game. But, you know, they're a, they seem to be a mid to late game team. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. I mean, this game only went 14 minutes, right? You know, and yeah. at the end of the day, you know, if you're if you're able to take advantage of I don't really think disturbance was ever really out of position or like, you know, made too many mistakes. But I mean, maybe they just weren't expecting like the joanna falling sword and the you know I, I don't know i mean the wave of force is disruptive the varian i don't know i mean the the stun locks and the cc potential coming out of bloodbath and beyond maybe they yeah. just weren't expecting themselves to go down that quickly yeah. well uh chat we're gonna see about getting uh okay yeah so we're gonna go ahead and get an interview here with the dude man in just a moment so if you've got any questions for the dude man uh go ahead and post them in chat there the dude man yeah um and we're gonna go to lobby five so uh let's go ahead okay. and uh hop over sounds there sounds good sounds Show good the yeah i am showing talents NGS. lobby five and don't forget to send me the don't forget to send me the um yep list. sending you that right now a discord link how do these guys not have a Discord link? Wait. Falstead Can't Blaze. Can't to tell this guy that. Chat. It... Who is the last? Who is the wait? Rhaegar. Thank you. Oh, I put the wrong. Wait. There we go, dude man. Now you are currently muted, so make sure that you unmute yourself. Or we will not be able to talk to you and ask questions. I mean, we'll be able to talk to you and ask questions, but you won't be able to answer them. All right. Uh, so, can you hear me now? Uh, we yeah. can hear you now. Butte, why don't you go ahead and start off with questions, because I have a cat that wants to get away from me. Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, congratulations. You guys uh, played super well. Um, I guess I have one question for you personally, and then a kind of a general team question. So super aggressive on the Li Ming, the Calamity um, calamity build. Were you at all worried about the potential of them basically, I don't want to say catching you out, but were you at all worried going that build? I'm kind of curious. Uh, no, that's the build I normally run, and I think it's by far and away the best build you can go nowadays, especially with the movement speed changes. Mm -hmm. um, but they, I could have been cut out a few times in that game. I think if you go and watch the replay, there's a couple times where had they turned, I'd be dead. So I got a, I got for away sure. with a little more than I should have. But uh, overall, it was a great match. So Yeah, for sure. Um, my second question is, you guys seem to be a mid to late game team, uh, and which there is nothing wrong with that. Props to you guys. And then we do have one question from chat. So I got you, True Hillian. Don't worry. Um, but... I mean, what's your guys' strategy, you know, being a mid to late game team? I mean, you want to, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, certainly. I don't know that we are, you know, of the caliber even yet to say we had a direct mid to game, late game strategy there. Um, but it did work out for us. I just, we kind of go with the heroes we like. We're still figuring out we're new. Um, but I think we're starting to come together as a unit. And as you can tell by the last two two matches, I think we're on the upward trend here. So, Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, we back. have a question from chat. Welcome back, Arrow. We have a question from chat. Um, how are you feeling in the first part of the match uh, with Artanis kind of, uh, you know, dying a little bit, having a little bit of a rough time? Um, that is uh, a question for you from the true Hillian 92 Definitely. I would say, in general, morale was low throughout that entire game. I thought it wasn't necessarily any specific play we did, rather that they just kind of messed up and gave us the game there. Um, they were they were kicking our butt that whole entire game, so props to them there. We just kind of got lucky with that wind tunnel at the end on that immortal fight, so um, it was a good game. Yeah, I think you guys, you know, don't sell yourself short. You know, you guys did a great job, um, you know, team fighting and coming together. You know, sometimes you only need one or two team fights, really good team fights and, you know, being able to capitalize to win a game. And, you know, that doesn't mean that you play the crap all game. So don't don't sell yourself too short. 
Um, no, definitely. <laughs> I mean, we definitely kept our, our heads in it and everything like that. I just, I, you know, I'm mm -hmm. somewhat critical of myself. Of I always think we can be, you know, better than our current versions. So, you know, try and achieve that goal. See what we can do, you know? It's just Understand. give it our all. So, of well, course. That's a, that's a good place to be because, regardless of whatever level of competition you are participating in, whether you're in DD or heroic, uh, there's always room for improvement. There's always room for practice. And, you know, certainly, uh, you know, there are some things that took place tonight that uh, open up opportunities for improvement. I'm not going to call out any specific moments, but if I was to bring up something about a certain hero trying to solo bosses and dying to them when they shouldn't, <laughs> um, that hey, might that be boss one area call, of improvement. That boss call, we should have all gone there rather than try to poke them from checking it. So that's another thing. We can just, you know, decisions you make during the game, you try and get it going. So, and, and you guys actually did do a really good job there of like stalling them, pulling them away. Um, and I think that if, if Varian, I'm assuming he got stunned because we weren't following him. So we were he, following dodged guys. The, he dodged the Diablo stun into the boss stun, unfortunately. It was just a mishap all around. So, ah, I got it, got it. The, uh, the APOC, which was, yeah. of course, not yeah. even there for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was, it was, it was there for you. And then, yeah, it was just, it was just a crazy chain of events. So, it was sure. a really fun game. Really fun game. Well, I got to tell you, you know, each of these drafts, uh, it, b like literally at the beginning of both games, I'm looking at the drafts. They feel a little bit better on the side of disturbance, a little bit more comfortable, uh, uh, in some ways, even a little bit more map oriented, um, you know, than your guys' uh, you guys had a, a falling sword, Johanna, which seemed really <laughs> questionable, it. but we love um, it it's good and then the uther <laughs> followed like we were trying to trying to put things together and just not quite following it um but then you make it work right you find a way to get a kill out there and then get the the uh the objectives in. and and one curse just get a couple I kills, know, one that was curse, crazy. We just, bosses we, it was nuts we got lucky we got lucky there it was just it all came together but despite the mishaps that we made there I, it, it was a lot of fun we were all pretty amped and hyped right now so so what was your favorite moment of the game? Uh, coming out of the game. bush. Coming out of the bush with the uh, Li Ming orb calamity to the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was great. I remember that. Always, always one of the most satisfying things in the game. Are you sure it wasn't Varian, like, dying to the boss? Like, I, like oh, are you sure? come on. We weren't going to talk about that. Come on. He did not die, did he? Oh, yeah, absolutely he did. He literally died. Uh, well... Yeah. I'm sure he's hanging his head in shame right now, but yeah. we'll play uh, you know, it. Things happen. It's just the way it is. So. Yeah. For sure. Well, fair enough. Uh, good job on your victories. That's going to put you ahead of uh, Disturbance in the standings now. Um, you guys were, you know, neck and neck as far as point, uh, not points, but as far as standings, you were uh, five and six. Um, so good job on that. Uh, Floor is yours for any shout outs as we get ready to wrap up for the night. Uh, shout out to Rackham for putting this all together for us as a team. So it's awesome. Lots of fun. Well, there you go. Wait, I have one last question. Are you giving away coupons to your store? I got to know. Where's my mute button? Oh. Uh, should I have details about that? I don't I, Just I talk about the, the about name of your so. team. Your name is Bloodbath and Beyond. Oh, okay. Thank you. You know what? It, it's a, it's a uh, you know, <laughs> I you don't guys, even know no, what the name of the real store is right now. I didn't know that's what you're talking about. So, yes. Uh, we <laughs> will have coupons if we.